London Film and Comic Con 2019. Everybody and welcome to my roundup of my experiences at London Film and Comic Con 2019. Uh, where to begin? Okay, so if you're not a regular viewer of my videos, if you just watch these ones, as I know quite a few people do, fair enough. Um, you you won't know, but I was in two minds about Comic Con this year. This year marked my 14th year of going to these conventions, either Collector Mania or London Film and Comic Con. Uh, I never had a seven-year itch, but I think I, I had a 14-year itch this year. I just wasn't feeling it. There were some great guests who I wanted to meet, and I was looking forward to meeting them, but I wasn't looking forward to the event itself. I wasn't getting excited about the event ex itself. Part of it is down to the money. It's getting very expensive. Um... Diamond Passes in particular last year, it seemed at the end that for Diamond Pass guests, you really needed to get the Diamond Pass to get their autograph. You had Peter Capaldi, was impossible to get an autograph with without a Diamond Pass. Matt Smith was the same, not that I needed him last year, but um, Meatloaf did a few VQs, but not many. It was definitely looking like it was getting to the stage where Diamond Pass guests, you need their autograph, you get the Diamond Pass, otherwise you haven't got a chance. And the premium on Diamond Passes seems to be increasing every year. When they first came out five years ago, for Sigourney Weaver and Michael J. Fox, the premium was something like 10 or £20 on top of the cost of the individual items. This year, for some of them, it was £60 extra. And even the basic, you know, the, the lower tier ones, if you like, it was like £30. And that's a lot of money. Just basically paying for a guarantee and a, and a gift, which, to be fair, looked like they were a lot better. In the past, it's either just been a print or a mug. Um, but this year it was power banks and earphones and all sorts of much better gifts by the look of it. But anyway... So that was putting me off as well. It's also the fact there's other stuff. I'm really into my music at the moment and I'd rather be record shopping. So I wasn't excited. I only bought tickets a week before the event. I bought my. I already decided that I wasn't going to do all three days. I was just going to go up on one, being the Sunday, because at the stage I decided that everybody who I wanted was going to be there on the Sunday. That changed... When, first of all, Zachary Quinto was moved to Friday, Saturday only. And then, which was, I really wanted to meet him, particularly for my Heroes collection. But it wasn't the end of the world to me. Um, but then, over the weekend, Peter Serovinovich, who was meant to be there all three days, it was a no-show on the Friday, and then it was announced that he was only going to be there on the Saturday. So I was gutted I missed him. Um... But yes, so as I say, a week before, I bought my entry ticket for the Sunday and photo shoot wise, I decided I was only going to get photo shoots again because of cost really for the four people I'd have been really gutted if I had gone there and never got to meet. So at least by having a photo shoot booked, I knew I was definitely going to be meeting them even if I didn't get my autograph, I'd definitely be meeting them. Um, and you'll see who that, those were as we go through. So yeah, that's a little pre-blurb. Um, so yes, Sunday morning, got up at four o'clock. Headed off, left home. Left home about ten to five, then left home again about five to five, because I'd gone out, got the car out of the garage, went to put the sat-nav on the window, and discovered that the bracket that attaches it to the window was missing. So I had to come back in, found it, and about five to five headed off. Pit stop to for money. Uh pit stop 
for petrol and then a pit stop for the loo on the way up. Uh, because I'd left it so late to book anything, I was too late to book the car park at Olympia, which is where I normally stay. Or stay, park. Um, so I did a bit of research and the W12 shopping centre in Shepherd's Bush was similar price. Well, it was the same price, I think, £25 all day. And was within walking distance and had good safety reviews. There were some NCPs nearer, but they had sort of, we were getting sort of one star safety reviews, people coming back to smashed windscreens. And so didn't want to risk that. So found, thanks to a sat nav, found my way to W12, parked up, no problem. And it was an easy walk down to a venue, it was sort of just out of the car park turn left and then just keep going straight and you were there so that was nice and easy got there just to the actual two olympia about five yeah about five to seven uh the doors to go into the holding area were opening at half seven so it was queued outside wasn't too far back i could tell once we got let in i was within about 100 people in front of me so was confident that I should be able to get low VQ tickets for everybody, which I did. Read my private eye to kill some time. And then just people watched for half an hour after I'd read that before we were let in. That's fine, headed straight up for the get the tickets. They changed the layout slightly, so there's a lot more room in the signing area, which was a vast improvement. Uh, but it also made it easier to see where people were as soon as you got up there. So I headed along sort of the big signers aisle, aisle, aisle will do, the wall where all the big signers were, um, grabbed me VQ tickets, got low ones, all but two of them were under 50 and the other two were both just over 100. Did a scoot round to find where other people were. Uh, only trouble I had I couldn't find where Val Kilmer was and it was because I'd sort of gone the wrong way to walk past his booth but I found that and he was one of the ones I got over 100 for got 111 more on that um so yep yeah, that was it I was happy they'd also changed where some of the photo shoot booths were and the layout of that and the hall the talk area and everything again vast improvement a lot less claustrophobic the uh, shoot areas weren't right on top of each other like they used to be. Far more room around them. Liked that. Uh, so found, went to the main hall, A, B, C and D, right? I knew I needed A, C, D and E for my four shoots. So A, C and D were easy. Look, double checked. I had a rough idea where E should be. And that was on the balcony above um, one of the traders' halls. So headed round. Oh, no, he's not there. So did a loop, right? So E and F should be down there, and G's on the back there. Yeah, that's there, and H is there. Yeah, that's fine. There's all the pop shoot booths, right? So where's E? Double checked on the map. Definitely should be down there. Then I realised because I was looking for the for the booths they set up for the photo shoots. I then realised that what they'd done was. For the first time in about, I think the last time they used these rooms was for Sigourney Weaver and Michael J. Fox year. But there's, there's rooms sort of going off of the balcony and they set up the photo shoots E and F in a couple of those rooms, which is a good idea. Again, made more room out on the balcony to queue, got less um, clogged. So yeah happy with that. So my first shoot wasn't until 120, no, yeah 120 I think it was. So I had loads of time to you know pick up the autographs I needed as and when. So I had a little mooch round whilst it was still relatively quiet. I went around the stalls to see if there was anything I couldn't live without. There wasn't. I was, I was tempted by a few things but there's it loads of stalls selling mystery boxes this year so I was tempted to get some of those just to do unboxings on my channel but I wouldn't have wanted the stuff that was inside them 
So I'd have had to end up giving them that away and that was hassle and a waste of money, really. So I didn't bother getting them. Did find one store that was selling... Well, I found two stores that were selling vinyl. One of them just had about six records. But there's another one that was selling soundtracks and um, musical albums. Um, albums of the musicals, not albums that had music on them. You know what I mean. Um, and they were set up properly so I could have a good crate dig around them. So that kept the, my record collecting side happy. Nothing I wanted, but it still felt good to have a bit of a dig. Uh, then I headed up and I thought, well, I'll just out of curiosity, see where people are up to. Well, first of all, I um, bumped into my friend Nigel, uh, who I've known through the autograph community for about 20 odd years. So we had a quick chat and a selfie. He, li he likes to take selfies with all his friends he meets at the conventions. So happy to post for one of those with him. Uh, yeah, and as I say, I sort of rammed along and I was surprised to see that already Christina Ricci, who was the first guest I met, was seeing VQs up to 50 and I had number 32, I think it was. So I joined her queue, uh, selected a photo, a bit disappointed in the choice of photos for her. Lots of Wednesday Adams, couple of Sleepy Hollows, which as you'll see is what I went for in the end. Uh, one Casper and one from something I didn't recognise at all and that was it so nothing from a sort of later more adult roles or no just I would have quite liked just a general headshot or something of her because I'm, I'm a fan of her for, throughout her career um, there was also <coughs> a little note and the girl taking my money emphasised that she wasn't signing anything from the film Black Snake Moan which I'm trying to see if it's accessible for me to show you no I can't see it um, it's a film she made t 10 or so years ago can't remember exactly when uh, with Samuel L. Jackson it's a really really good film and she is fantastic in it um, she plays a nymphomaniac in it so it's quite a sexual role, and there's obviously nudity involved and all that, which isn't the problem with it for her. She's done other films since, that's had even more nudity in, Afterlife. Um, but it's the way the film was marketed, it was the poster they used made it look like she was sort of submissive, and she really wasn't happy with it. Um, you can read it on Wikipedia what the problem was. So she sort of disowned that film. Which is probably a good job because I nearly took the DVD to get signed. So I'm glad I didn't. Um, but yeah, she wasn't there. I'd let her McHugh. She nipped out for a couple of minutes for a break. And about 10, 15 minutes later, she finally turned up again. But it was, I wasn't in a rush, so I wasn't concerned, although it was very hot. Um, once she was there, she was getting through people quickly. Uh, she wasn't a chatty person. But I complimented her and she thanked me and she said, you know, she greeted me when I walked up and she said thank you, you know, all the, the usual pleasantries. Um, and this is the photo she signed for me. As I say, one from Sleepy Hollow. Uh, her signature's changed quite a lot over the years. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm, my body's sort of exhausted from you. Uh, I'm filming this on Monday. So, I'm still recovering. <clears throat> so yeah, um, I wrote to her. When she was filming Penelope, she, that was filmed at Pinewood, however long ago that was. And I wrote to her then and she signed a photo for me then. Um, and you'll, I'll, put it, I'll put it up on here so you can compare how her signature has changed. So, this is the old one. And this is the new one. Side by side. If I'm clever. <coughs> yeah. Um, but that was a good start to get her so early. She was one of my must meets. Uh, so you'll see she's actually the last person I met as well because I had a photo shoot with her. 
uh, scooted around a bit more and one of the non-VQ guests only had a short queue so I joined the back of that and that was David Norton who is I say best known probably really only known for an American werewolf in London he played the lead in that uh, again slightly disappointed with the photos loads of photo options all of them I think from an American werewolf in London but the, they had the picture the big boards they have above their desks to show you know who they are and what they're from and where they're sat they had the picture from the transformation scene where he's got his hand out like that and it's all elongated and I love that image you always have done it's sort of the iconic image of the transformation scene but they didn't have that on the desk um, but they did have another one from the transformation scene so as you'll see that's what I went for whilst he was seeing the person in front of me I was speaking to his guest assistant just checking is it okay you know she was happy to take a photo for me she said yeah as long as you give me your best smile um went down in front of him and he just you know sort of acknowledged me and then turned to her and said any idea when we're getting these batteries so I was listening in and he had a little desk fan because it was boiling hot everywhere um and the batteries had run out and somebody had taken them off to be recharged so we had a little conversation about that and then when I was speaking to him that sort of fed the conversation so we were talking about the heat mainly which was a, a topic of conversation with a lot of the guests um, but he was very nice and um, yes he was happy to pose for photos with me so this is the photo he signed it's Beware the Moon and then uh, the guest assistant actually took a couple for me as she went to take it. She said, don't forget, big smile. And he, you could sort of see, what's he, what's he on about? So I said, big smile. And these are the photos she took. Scooted round a bit more and yeah, I'm just trying to think when I met various people, not guests, but real people. Um, but I don't think that was now. Get around a bit more and discovered that another of the bigger guests, my ticket number was already being called. And that was Gina Torres. Now, Gina is the main reason I, that, despite all my ambivalence towards the event, I was definitely going to be going because Gina Torres was the only member of a Firefly Stroke Serenity cast, main cast, who I hadn't met. I met everybody else, including Ron Glass, who's no longer with us. And for years it looked like Gina would, no one would ever get Gina. But then all of a sudden, her first ever, definitely her first European, might even be her first worldwide convention, um, she was coming over, so I had to meet her. So she's another one I had a photo shoot with, which you will see later. But managed to get straight up, nice and early. Another one in the bag. Um, she was a lovely, warm, friendly. Not, you know, we didn't have a deep conversation or anything, but very pleasant. I said to her, you know, you you complete my set. She said, oh, that's good to hear. She said, um, yeah, really nice. And this is the photo that she signed for me. As well as Firefly, she was in Angel. Uh, she's mo most recently she was in Suits, and uh, she's done lots and lots of other bits as well. And after that, scooch around a bit and was walking past on one of the sets of balconies. They had a row of guests, mainly Star Wars guests, and. The Cannibal Hol Holocaust guests were there as well. But I'm walk just walking past on one of my laps. And I walk about and a poster tube sort of stuck against me. And I thought, bloody you know, inconsiderate so-and-sos. I carried on walking and suddenly, Martin! 
So I turned around, it was my friend Sam. She, she deliberately poked me with a thing because she was on her phone at the time, so she couldn't sort of stop me. Um, so I turned around and we had a chat while she was queuing, a little catch up. And then went our separate ways. Uh, Sam's another one I've known for many, many years through the autograph community. So walked around a bit more and then discovered that another of the big guests was available. Uh, this was the most expensive for me. There, there were, I think there was one more expensive guest, which was um, Hayden Christensen, who, if he'd been a lot cheaper, I would have met, but I wasn't paying the prices they were asking for him. Which, if that's how much he cost, that's how much he cost. But considering, all right, he was pretty much the lead in two Star Wars films. That's really, you know, he's done lots of other films, but not as a huge lead actor, really. Um, and let's face it, he wasn't particularly good in them. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I enjoy the prequels nowhere near as much as the original trilogy. I particularly enjoy um, the third one, Revenge of the Sith. Is that the third one? Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones. Yeah, that's the right order, isn't it? Uh, the last one, anyway. The third one. But he he was a weak part of it, let's say that. I'm sure he's a lovely but And I've seen it, he's brilliant in Factory Girl. He's really, really good. I really like him in that. So uh, not, uh, nothing against him as an actor. I just don't think he was directed well in those films. Anyway, that's probably upset a few people. Feel free to disagree. It's all opinion. Anyway, so I, what I'm saying is, considering his, um, he's, you know, really only known for those two films, I think it was £125, something like that. That's a hell of a lot of money. But that's beside the point. The second highest price guest was a guest I now met, who was Robert Carlyle. Uh, well, his autograph was £95, I think a photo shoot was 90 and he was one who had the premium on his diamond pass was, I think it was £60, it was ridiculous. So I really, really wanted to meet Robert because I'm a big fan of him and as a Bond collector I needed him for his role in The World Is Not Enough. Uh, Reynard? So it's a character name I can never remember. It's something like that, anyway. Um, I'm also a big fan of Train Spotting. That's one of my favourite films. And he's done so much other good stuff. So I re as I say, I really, really wanted to meet him. But I couldn't justify getting a photo shoot with him and an autograph. And I decided that if he was so busy with Diamond Passes that I never got his autograph, that would be fine. At least it would be £95 saved. As it was, I managed to get him really early on a low VQ ticket. Again, he was one of my, I think, something ridiculous, like number 23 I got for him. Um, I think he was a bit overpriced for the market, if you see what I mean. So I, I think he'd probably have had more visitors and sold more diamond passes if he was just that little bit cheaper. But anyway, that's beside the point. Uh, again, he wasn't actually, this seemed to be the run, they were letting people in whilst people nipped off for breaks, but as soon as they heard that they were on their way back, they were letting everybody in. Well, not everybody, but, you know, they were making sure people were in the queue for when they got back. So, had a look at the photos. They had lots from Once Upon a Time, a couple of train spotting ones, and a couple of Bond ones, and I went for one of the Bond ones, naturally. Uh, what else did they have? I think they had a full Monty. And a couple I didn't instantly recognise, but they had quite a good selection for him. Uh, went up, got to my turn. You know, said, Can you make it to Martin. I said to him, I just want to say, I think you're amazing. I don't think I use the word amazing, because I'd use amazing with Christina Ricci. Uh, I think I might have been fantastic. <laughs> I think you're a fantastic actor. I said, your range is just spectacular. The fact that you can play Hamish Macbeth and Begbie is just, you know, I said, 
and he, he sort of looked up and you could tell he was, you know, happy I'd said it. And he said, well, you know, that's what I look for. That's what I enjoy doing. Like, you know, I like to play different characters. And we had a, a short little exchange and then he finished the photo. And he said, well, th well, thank you. And thank you very much for saying that to me. It means a lot. So, yeah, really nice meeting with Robert. He was a really nice man. Um, this is the photo he signed for me. So while I was in the queue for Robert, I was I suddenly heard a, a Mr. Harris. So I turned around, this guy came over from the queue that was to, to our left. I said, just want to say, I've watched your videos, really enjoy them, keep up the good work. So William, thank you very, very much, it means a lot. And you can call me Martin, uh, or sir, <laughs> but Martin will do. Um, yeah, nice to have met you. So then, after I'd got Robert, I did another little scoot round, still had loads of time, and I got Kerry Ingram. Uh, Kerry played Marcella, I want to say, in Game of Thrones. The girl with the stone face who, spoilers, got burnt by her mother, and the Red Witch. Um, didn't really have anything specific to say to her you know a i wanted her for the game of thrones collection but b what can i you know she's a bit young and i do you know that's all she's done so well she played matilda in the west end um but you know as i said i didn't just really have much to say to, to her you know hundreds of people must have said to her you know how how her a death scene was horrible and what have you. So I was going to say something, but she just never engaged back when when I said, you know, I said, can you make it to Martin? And she just said, yeah. But you could tell that she wasn't going to sort of converse. Now, whether that was partly me, whether it's because of her age, so she's not used. To, I mean, she's done other conventions, but where she needs a spark really to start a conversation I don't know but she was she was fine and, you know she was very pleasant and she happily posed a photo with me and you know she said thank you and goodbye and you know nothing wrong whatsoever it just wasn't a chatty conversation filled meet but happy to have met her uh, this is the photo she signed for me and again the, the her crew member took a couple of photos so these are they then after meeting Kerry another scoot round and discovered that uh brain 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 Emily de Raven was available to me with my VQ number um, I'd actually spotted I could have got in earlier, but she wasn't there. So rather than wait, I went and got Kerry. Uh, but came back and Emily was back. So I joined her queue. Uh, Emily, the reason I was meeting Emily was she was Claire in Lost. She's also Belle, I think, in Once Upon a Time. And she's done various other bits as well. She's an Australian actress who lives and works in America. Uh, picked a nice photo of her as Claire. Took it up could tell straight away that she was bubbly you know really nice warm person but well, we were all warm um we, she discussing uh, what was a bit strange was that so you, with these you sort of got a big long queue and then you got the table at the end and normally you just sort of queue up to the left or right depending on which side of the queues they are um and you sort of stay as far away as possible so as not to sort of crowd everything and then you just move over when it's your turn but that, what they were insisting is that so you had let's so say that was the table then they insisted that the queue was in a straight line there then 
sort of the person who was next in turn was stood exactly there, sort of square on, and then the person who Emily was seeing was there. It was most peculiar, and they were very, you know, strict about, you know, some reason. Don't know why. But so it meant while I was sort of next in turn, I was party really to the whole conversation with the guy to the right of me, which was mainly about the heat. Um, because Emily had to sort of adjust herself, which was, you didn't know where to look because suddenly she was reaching down in between her skirt to sort herself out. And, you know, and when a beautiful woman's doing that in front of you, you sort of think, mustn't, mustn't stare, mustn't stare, mustn't stare. But I think I'll behave myself. Um, but anyway, came to my turn, complimented her on Claire in Lost. Had a little discussion about the difference between the heat in Hawaii and the heat there. And I say she was just very warm, bubbly, lovely person. Um, and she was another one who I really would have regretted not meeting. So I've got a photo shoot with her, which you'll see later. But this is the photo she signed for me. And she's got a lovely signature. So now it was finally near enough time for my first photo shoot. Um, it was, so this was in E, which was one of the ones that was in the room. So I went, I was, it was Gina Torres. So Adam Baldwin from Firefly and Serenity was also at the con. I met him before twice, so I didn't need to get him. Um, but what they did, they had, Adam had a shoot. Then they did a joint shoot with him and Gina. And then it was Gina's solo one. So I sort of loitered while Adam's was towards the end. I just sort of sat against the railings. Good excuse to have a little rest. And then the joint shoot was on and I could see he was starting, the crew member in charge of that area was starting to arrange people ready for Gina's shoot. I was batch two, but it was only a 20 minute shoot. So I knew I was, that it wasn't going to be a huge amount of people in front of me. There can't have been that many diamonds. And then it was only gold passes, batch one, batch two. So um, any gold passes would have been either batch one or batch two anyway. So it wouldn't have been millions of people anyway. So I just went up and loitered and got ready to be called into the queuing system, which was about five minutes or so. And it all went through fine. Got into the room and it was the usual setup: put your bags down, go around, pick your bags up girl a couple in front of me was wearing cat ears and she bought along another set and she sort of said do you mind putting these on and Gina just sort of gave her a funny look and then what these she said yeah yeah all right she says and then she was struggling to it was sort of a elastic band I don't mean a you know a rubber band but a band of an elastic with these two cat ears and they looked like they were sort of plasticky with white with blue inner ears and it was getting them set up so they'd be facing the right way but eventually she worked it out and posted a photo so it was a bit of amusement um she was cheating though because she's already a tall woman and she was also in six inch heels as well so as you'll see she towered over me but she was lovely um when i'd met her yes when i'd met her for the autograph all the guests had fans blowing on them, but hers was actually facing out towards us. So when I was stood waiting while she was doing the person before me, I was having a little chat. I said to the uh, crew member, I said, oh, can I just stay here? He said, well, you can, but I'm going to have to charge you. I, said, oh, I, won't bother um, I don't know if she'd remembered me, but after I'd had my photo with Gina and I, was, I said, I always turn to the guests and thank them and a crew member just sort of looked at me and said no thank you she said so I don't know if she'd remembered me or if it was just a bit of you know a bit of bants shall we say no let's not say that but yes picked up photo really happy for it happy for it happy with it and this is it then I had two hours till the next couple of photo shoots I had so I, what I actually did next was I popped up to the, the Yalk floor 
Uh, Yalk. It's something like young adult literature convention, but I don't think it is that. But it's ba that's basically what it is. It's a convention for authors of young adult books, and it's sort of it's separate from LFCC, but it's all part of it as well. It's a bit strange. Um, so if you buy a ticket for LFCC, you can go up to Yalk an hour after opening. And similarly, if you buy a ticket for Yalk, you can go down to LFCC an hour after opening. So, um, but one of the guests at Yalk was Carrie Hope Fletcher, who is a star of musicals, an author, obviously, and a blogger, or a vlogger, a big YouTube presence. Uh, she's actually the sister of Tom Fletcher from McFly, and I sort of discovered her through him. And have become a big fan. I watch all her videos. I saw her in the Adams Family on tour a couple of years ago, and just really like her. So I knew she was doing a signing there, but I wasn't sure when. So I went up to have a scoot round and see when it was, and it was between two and four. So came back down, and plan was uh, to go up. Was it two or four? Was it three and five? No, it's three and five. That's better. Yeah. So the plan was to go up at three. There was talk that I was going to be virtual queue ticketing her. So I was going to go up at three, see how busy it looked like she was going to be, and then play it by ear. Um, if I was going to get her autograph, I would have had to have bought one of her books. If they had a Waterstone set up there to buy, which would have been fine. It's not something I would read, but it would have been. You know, I would be happy to get it to get her autograph. I've got a uh, signed copy of her CD anyway. But yeah, so that was the plan. So I was going to go back at three. Anyway, came back down and who was next? Um, Carrie Ann Moss. I wasn't quite sure what was going on with her queue. I had VQ ticket 100 and 103, I think it was, something like that, for her. Um, but when I was in the queue for Jean, no, Emily, I'd noticed that she, her queue was really quiet. There were just the odd one or two people going up. So I wasn't sure if they were still just calling diamond passes for her and hadn't opened to VQs. I wasn't quite sure what was going on. And on her, at the end of the queues, they have a little board saying, obviously, who it is, how much they cost, and who can join the queue. So it will say diamonds or diamonds batch one and two or whatever, golds, and then tickets one to 30 or one to 50 or one to 100 or wh wh however many they're letting in. And hers was just blank. Now normally if it's open queue, they'll put on there, open queue. But I wasn't sure what was going on. A um, couple of times I walked past and she wasn't there anyway. Then she got there and I saw she was sat there. So I just sort of went up to the queue and said, who are you letting in? I said, oh, it's open queue. Excellent. Um, so I got Carrie Ann Moss. Uh, Carrie Ann Moss, Trinity in the Matrix. She's also in Jessica Jones, the Netflix Marvel series, and a few other things she's done. You know, she's a, a jobbing actress, but Trinity from the Matrix is really what she's known for. And sure enough, that was a photo I picked. They had a good selection from her, but I picked one that had a nice space that she could sign in. Um, didn't have a deep conversation with her, but again, very pleasant, you know, said hello, thank you, etc, etc. I didn't have much to say to her, you know. She was in one amazing film and two very disappointing sequels to it. But, you know, you can't really say that to her. Um, but yes, I was really happy to have met her. Um, again, she was quite, she was £75. But this is her first European convention. She's done at least one in America, possibly more. But this is her first time over here. Yeah, as I say, happy to have met her. This is a photo she signed for me. Okay, so then I still had a while before my next shoots, uh, but by now it was three o'clock, so I headed back up. I could see that Carrie was had a, a long queue and, and a queue member giving out tickets. Uh, so 
I thought, well, what I'll do, I'll, my shoots would last till, depending on how quickly I got through them, about five past ten past, quarter past four. So I thought, well, I'll go back up after then, and if she's on open queue by then, I'll, I'll get her. Uh, came back down, had a scoot round. Uh, the last person I needed autograph wise, well, there was two that I needed. But the last person I needed who I got was Tara Fitzgerald. Uh, every time I'd walked past, she'd had a really big queue. I vastly underestimated her popularity. Um, then a few times I walked past and they'd started giving out virtual queue tickets. I thought, oh god, here we go. When they start giving them out that late, you think, am I going to get through? But I, at one point, I got that, went round, and she had about four people there and no crew member giving out tickets or anything, so I just joined the queue, and that was fine. And I met her. I really didn't know what to expect of Tara. I've been a big fan of hers ever since the Chamomile Lawn back in 1998, something like that. Uh, trying to see if I can see the DVD of that. No. Um, whenever it was, anyway. So I've been a big fan of her for a long time. I've watched a lot of her stuff. Um, I went to see, in the West End, The Misanthrope. The reason I went to see it was because it was Kira Knightley's first appearance in the West End. So I booked to see that, because she's my favourite actress. And um, Tara was in that. So I'd hoped to meet her after that at the stage door. When... She, we were waiting at the stage door afterwards. Tara came out and she was heads down and just went. She didn't stop for anyone. So I thought, oh, maybe she's just not an autography person. Fair enough. You know, some people aren't. I've got, also got a feeling that I wrote to her and never got a reply. I might be misremembering. But so in my head, I'd always thought that she was just one of these actresses who don't really do that side of stuff. But then last year, I think it was last year, they managed to get here for get her for Cardiff Comic Con. So just in case she did it and hated it, I pre-ordered one through Showmasters um, pre pre-order website and got one through them. So I knew at least I had her autograph. But as is or seems to be, always be the case when I do that, she was announced for a con I was going to. So yes, she was announced for Comic Con. So I booked a photo shoot with her last week, and all the time. It was looking like I might not get to meet her. I thought, well, at least I've got the autograph and I will be meeting her for a photo shoot. But then suddenly opportunity arose. So I went up to her and I could tell, you know, just from watching her with people, she was stood up all the time. She was just really engaging with everyone. And I could tell I'd got the whole wrong idea from her and she was lovely. And she, she really was. So I complimented her, you know, I said I've been a big fan ever since Camera Wild launched. She said, oh, thank you very much. She said I'd seen her in the Missing Throat and she said, oh, did you enjoy it? I said, yeah, you know, didn't know what to expect because I didn't really know who Moliere was. It was based on a Moliere play. Um, but really enjoyed it. Oh, what did you think of Kira and... Um... I heard his name just a minute ago. A bloke from Homeland. Damien Lewis. Said, what did you think of Kira and Damien? I said, yeah, really, really enjoyed it. I didn't say I went because I wanted to see Kira because I didn't want to you know, say that I didn't really want to see you, I wanted to see Kira, because that's not true, but Tara was an added bonus, if you like. Anyway, um, so we had a little chat about that, and she's still, have you been coming to these things for long? The guy just before me, it was his first one. I said, oh no, I've been doing these for 14 years. She said, I'm fascinated. She said, it's, you know, I'm enthralled of how they work and everything. Things. It must have changed a lot. So we had a little conversation about how they've changed over the 14 years and how people's attitude towards the genres have changed, what have you. And just a really nice meeting. As she, as you'll see in the photo, she's so, oh, it's so nice to meet you or so lovely meeting you or something like that. Um, and I said, you know, I'll see you in a photo shoot. It was only about half an hour away. But at this point, she said, oh, great. She said, and said, said our oh, goodbyes. And she shook my hand. You know, she shook, took her. <laughs> she proffered her hand for me to shake. You know, it wasn't me forcing a handshake, if you like. Um, yeah, just really lovely me. Probably my, my best one of the day. Um, so got her. So then, yes, I had half an hour then 
before my next two shoots. Um, so at this stage, I will tell you about Val Kilmer. So, as I said at the start, found Val's booth eventually and picked up 111 or what it was, ticket number. Walked round and thought, oh, I'll just out of curiosity, go and see what Val's up to and could see his queue wasn't moving at all. It wasn't the, sort of the same people who were there when I picked up a ticket, but it wasn't moving. And I thought, oh well, went mad a few more times. Next time I looked, the crew member who had been giving out the tickets had a little whiteboard and it said, uh, Val Kilmer is on a break because he was feeling unwell. Oh dear, shame. Um, you may or may not know Val had throat cancer last year, year before, um, which he, touch wood, is now fully recovered from, but it's, as you can imagine, left him a shadow of his former self, shall we say. Um, went around a few more times and he's now had, um, Val Kilmer is being attended to by a first aider. Oh God, here we go. I thought that's it. You know, not going to get Val. So, a few more times later when I walked past, uh, Val Kilmer has been taken ill. So he's having a rest. He will be signing between two and four. So I thought, oh, that's promising. So I come two o'clock or just after I sort of headed along just to see what was happening. Nobody had moved. Okay. Three or four more times in the next hour and three quarters. I went past again. Exactly the same people stood in exactly the same places. Kilmer still wasn't signing. So it was just before I had to go for my photo shoots. I had a look and he just started signing. So this was, as I say, about quarter to four. Oh, that's typical. Just when I can't do it, he's signing. So, and he had a photo shoot of 420, I think it was. So I went off for my two photo shoots, which we'll get onto in a minute. No, we'll get onto now. So I went off for my two photo shoots. So first up was Emily DeRaven in photo shoot area C. Um, if you're interested, uh, again, worked perfectly. She was lovely. This is for photo. girl just behind me broke into tears, well, bur broke, burst into tears just after, I don't know exactly why, but everybody just sort of, sort of turned and gave her a strange look, but who knows. Um, yeah, but happy with that photo, I and mean, then it was straight over to D, which was just at one end of a hall, it was just C was there and D was there, so it was a short little walk for Tara's Fitzgerald's photo shoot. Uh, while I was in the queue, I, had, I saw Nigel again, so we had a little chat whilst, whilst we were parallel in the queuing system. It's snakes. Uh, went in for Tara. When it got to me, I said, oh, hello again. She said, oh, hello again. She said, and you could tell she did genuinely recognise me. Um, and when I, we went in for the shoot, she sort of leant in towards me, as you can see. So really happy with that one. So I'd said to Nigel, hopefully Val will still be signing when I come out, but went over and no Val had gone in preparation for his photo shoot. So I had 40 minutes or so by now till my final photo shoot with Christina Ricci. So I went back up to the Yalk and Carrie was still really busy, so I never got Carrie Hope Fletcher, which, as I say, isn't the end of the world. I have her autograph. I've seen her on stage. I could see her there anyway. Um, I'm sure one day we'll meet. That sounds a bit dodgy, but, <laughs> um, you know, she, she's fairly accessible at stage doors and things like that. Um, so I went back down and just sort of killed time. Uh, bumped into Nigel again, so we had another little chat. Had a scoot around the stalls. I've been down a couple of times to pick up some, a couple of drinks. 
one of which was very it was expensive. It was three pound thirty for a little two hundred and fifty ml bottle, but it was it was sparkling. You know, it was a fizzy drink, but it was apple and rhubarb with cinnamon. It was delicious. Uh, but yeah, killed some time. By now, I was aching all over. I think where I've been off work for a week, and most of that week I've been sat at a computer working on my next two music quizzes, and I think I was a bit um, unprepared, and my legs were killing me, yes, by the end of the day. But yeah, that's beside the point. Got to time to for Christina Ricci's photo shoot. Headed over. Started, you know, I was batch four where I'd left it to a week before to book it. So diamonds are in, gold passes, batch one, batch two. That sort of filled up the queuing area. And it was the slowest moving queue I've ever known at a photo shoot. I don't know what was going on. You know, people they were going through and the photo shoot, photos were being taken. But for some reason, it just, the queue wasn't really moving very fast. So, don't know why, because when I got in, it was just normal, wasn't overly slow, apart from a few people in front of me. There was a couple with their baby, and the baby was called Wednesday, as in Wednesday Adams. So, they wanted a photo, they, they had two photos, they had one with just Christina holding Wednesday, and one with all of them. And of course, it was trying to get the baby to look at the camera and all that, so that slowed things down, but it was no... You know, it's a nice thing to watch for joy and the parents seeing this happen and Christina's joy of being with the baby. Um, so that slowed things down, but otherwise it was just normal going around. But eventually, batch three joined the queue and then finally, well not finally because it was batch five and batch zero, who are the people who buy on the day, have a sales ticket, sales ticket, sales desk. Um, but yeah, eventually joined the queue and slowly eventually got round um i'm not quite sure with this photo what exactly is going on i because you know she was fine and some people were asking for hug photos and she was happy to do that and everything it wasn't like she was standoffish um sorry i had a low battery thing come up uh i'm nearly at the end so i went in arm round which was fine and she was arm round and I just sort of leaned slightly towards her and the photo makes it look like she's leaning away a bit but she what you know I could feel she wasn't and you know when I turned around she had a big smile and was thank you and I have you and so I don't know if it was slightly at a Dutch angle or whether the photo was taken sort of a, a second later than it should have been if you see what I mean or she was just trying to get away from me because I was a hot sweaty mess, I don't know. But anyway, this is a photo of me and Christina Ricci. But I'm happy with it, apart, you know, apart from that. But then when you look at her, she's pretty much straight. So it might just be that it looks strange where I'm sort of leaning in and she isn't. Anyway, that's beside the point and as I say, I'm running out of time. So it came out, um, Whilst I was in the queue for Christina, which is what a point I wanted to make, um, suddenly loads of security guards and people started clearing a path and Val Kilmer was being pushed in a wheelchair back to his signing booth. Well, I say it's Val Kilmer. A guy came from where he was having his photos done and he just had a red blanket completely over him. It was Val Kilmer. Um, so at that point I decided, A, because I was knackered, and B, he's clearly not well. But I wasn't going to go back and try to get his all 12. So I came out, packed up and headed home. Uh, the walk back to the car was a bit painful, but that was it. Yes, uh, this is a long one, isn't it? Not for, that's just for one day. So well done if you made it this far. Uh, thank you for watching. If you do just watch these, check out my other videos. Um, even if you're just interested in autographs, there's an autograph playlist. I've been showing off my collection, signed CDs, signed books, signed programs. I'm working through all my autograph folders. There's lots of videos there to play with. Um, and if you're interested in music, I'll do lots of music videos. Showing off my, again, showing off my collection, what I buy. Various other bits. If you want to, watch them. If you like them, subscribe. Thumbs up and all that stuff. Comment always happy to engage and thank you for watching um